Right, so today we are talking extension tubes for macro photography. What are extension tubes for macro photography? They are tubes that extend the magnification of your lens. In short, there are a bunch of these little tubes. As you can see, I've got a bunch of them on this lens over here and you can put various ones. They usually come in sets of three. I'll put some B-roll instead of taking this apart while I'm doing this here. Otherwise, we'll end up with a messy video. And they allow you to get nice and close to the subject to get nice and close super close-up images which are called macro images or macro photography now opting to purchase macro tubes for or extension tubes for your macro photography is a more affordable way to get into macro photography instead of investing into a dedicated macro lens which are more expensive but the main difference as far as i can tell as far as i know with my limited experience with these tubes is with a macro lens a dedicated macro lens you can focus to infinity and with these tubes you pretty much only have a set focus distance and it's really really close to your lens now i didn't know this when i first got these tubes which i found on ebay and i attached them to my lens and i was a bit nervous that i'd wasted my money but i came to find that all you have to do is get really close you just can't focus to infinity like i just said i have my notes here okay, so before we continue showing you photos that i've made with these tubes just a little bit of background i purchased a 28 millimeter yashica lens so contacts a Yashica lens, a 28mm f2.8 lens at a market in Cape Town and I paid about £3 if I'm not mistaken. It was either £3 or £6 for this lens. I think it was £3 for this lens and I didn't yet have the adapter for the lens but I ended up eventually purchasing the adapter. So it adapted to my S5 and while I was doing some online shopping for something completely unrelated on eBay I came across this set over here extension tubes for macro photography which was p particular for my mount for this one lens that i have in this mount it's a yashica contacts mount and i thought it's affordable 10 pounds may as well give it a go i'd never really considered macro photography seriously and i still don't but i figured it's affordable maybe may as well dabble into it on one of my off days and i'm glad that i did so that's the background lens extension tubes how they usually come is in various sizes so for example i got myself a 13 millimeter extension 21 millimeter and i believe this one is 30 31 and how this works is that if you want to get one time magnification on your existing lens so this is a 28 millimeter lens you're going to have to add 28 millimeters to get one times magnification now if i wanted to get two times magnification i'd have to add 56 millimeters if i wanted two times it would need to be two times 28 56 so essentially the calculation is the length of your tubes divided by your focal length it's like that all right so enough of that background information and informational information some housekeeping so the photos that i've made some of the videos that i've taken they were for fun they were on an off day or on a couple of off days so these are not made for professional purposes and because they're not made for professional purposes i went quite heavy on saturation i played around with a bunch of them they pushed to the point that they don't need to go on any type of portfolio but it was just fun i didn't use any external light sources so what you typically would want is have an external soft light source or some sort of light source to help light up your subject nicely and especially for my circumstance where I ended up shooting this at f16 to get as much depth of field as I possibly could get. So is a 16, yeah. So I shot at f16 to make sure as much of my subject was in focus, which resulted in a lot less light coming through. So there is that situation. So I raised a bunch of shadows in post a bunch with this as well, giving me some HDR type effects. Not my best work, but it certainly was a fun day. Oh, and while we're looking at these images, I thought I'd record the process of using Adobe's AI denoise, which I'm finding fascinating. I'm really enjoying seeing how pictures that I usually won't even worry about in terms of noise, I throw that denoise on it and I'm well impressed. And with this image over here, I didn't even realize that there was a bug at the top there. And it was only after applying the denoise and inspecting the close up while I'm denoising and deciding what setting to use the denoise, which I usually just leave at the default, I noticed that bug there by accident, which was a 
fun, pleasant surprise. Another thing to note is that if you end up getting yourself some extension tubes for your macro photography, you'll want to check how shiny they are on the inside. Mine are relatively shiny and that resulted in some glare or not glare, some sort of hazy effect in some of my photos. And it totally depends on how the light bounces around through those tubes and hits your sensor. Diffraction can happen as well. So I'm not sure if what you're seeing is diffraction or just general hazing from my lens itself. I don't think it's from the lens itself. I think it is diffraction. Diffraction. What am I saying? So at some point I will be flocking this, adding some sticky velvet in here just to prevent the light from bouncing around in the future. But fortunately this is just a hobby, the macro photography. So it's not a it's not a train smash of any sort and this does actually bring me to just a fun story that came about with the macro photography i was we've got this small living not living we've got this small outside space where we live and on days off and if the sun is shining i have a habit of kind of losing time outside in whatever garden i may find so even with this contained space i can spend a couple of hours just looking around inspecting bugs and look you know just exploring and i came across this weird looking thing and then i found more of them and I found them interesting. I thought they were cool, but I didn't really think much about it beyond that. And a few days later, I ended up finding this thing. And I thought to myself, this looks similarly close to a ladybug. So I thought I'd encountered some sort of ladybug life cycle and I was correct. This thing over here is a ladybug larva which eventually turns into this pupa which is i guess essentially a cocoon and after just keeping an eye on these things for a while i ended up finding ladybugs all over the show and this is not a particularly good photo but this is what they look like well this is what one looked like when it just came out and it stuck around there for quite a while it stayed by its empty cocoon which eventually dries up to go kind of look like this brown dried up scab and then down the line i discovered that these ladybugs eat this white fluffy stuff over here which i had noticed on our apple trees they're not our apple trees they are our landlord's apple trees let him know that this fluffy stuff is growing on there and he was going to get that sorted out but i i thought it was just white fluffy microorganism things i don't know yeah there are microorganisms to a large extent because i didn't see anything beyond fluff but when i got close in there with these macro extension tubes stacked up one on the other. It was a whole other world. And I found myself just being entertained for a very long time just watching these things. And I discovered that ladybugs are brutal and they're hungry. And when you get really close in there, it's actually quite, it's quite gross. Look how that thing just rips into it, just went there for the tummy. So that's my little dabble in macro photography, some macro video. Next time if I do get into this or try this again, I'll consider looking at some or using some external light source. The sun just, the sun was enough, but it didn't produce professional photos in my opinion. And it'll be fun to maybe play out, play around with maybe some flash, those like diffusing things and we'll see how it goes next time. But this was a fun dabble in macro photography. I hope you enjoyed the photos. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for being here folks. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. One of my photos has been shortlisted for the British Photography Awards, folks. And the best part of all of this is that there is a People's Choice Awards category, which means that if you feel inclined to do so, you are welcome to vote for my photo. I've put the link to that in the description of my video. It takes you straight to my photo. You can hit the vote button and that's that. And it would mean, it would mean the world to me. If you get the time to do so, please vote and let me know in the comments. I'll be sure to thank you. Thanks, folks.